Hello and welcome everyone to this playthrough of Captain of Industry. In this series of episodes I will show you how I beat the map You Shall Not Pass. This map is considered to be the most difficult map of them all. Uh, as you can see from the description, um, developers say that this map is for experts only. I do not consider myself an expert, but maybe a fairly experienced player. And I will show you how I approach this map from the very beginning until I launch a rocket. This map is considered difficult because it has very limited area in the beginning. This will not be a problem for our industries, but it will be a very big problem for farms. But if we are careful enough, we will be just fine. I will play this map on a standard difficulty. And another point which I want to highlight is that this series of episodes will not show uh, exactly a uh, complete playthrough. It will be more like a summary of highlights of my progress. So let's begin. The first server billets are very straightforward. I assign two trucks to the tree harvester, then designate some trees for harvesting, build waste collection for our citizens and started preparing the setup to smelt scrap iron into usable iron plates. To smelt iron scraps we will also need coal, which uh, in the beginning we can make in a coal maker, which is already built on screen. And here I'm just quickly building this uh, the simplest setup of one furnace with a smokestack plus two metal plate casters. With that being done, I already started planning the ramp which will help me to reach the upper surface. It is important to reach the upper surface as quickly as possible because without this area we will not be able to build enough farms to sustain growing population. In the beginning the ramp will be filled just with waste generated by the settlement, but later we can also use slag, rocks and dirt generated by our industry. After the ramp, I have built the research laboratory in some random place, just because the tier 1 technologies do not require any resources, so we don't have to build any production chain. And started researching the first basic necessary technologies, like farming to produce potatoes and construction materials. In preparation for the production of our own food, I have moved the food market to a new location so that it does not interfere with the future expansion of the settlement and started the building of the first simple farm which will produce uh, potatoes and will support our current population. At this point I started running low on construction materials so I have built three manual assemblers to produce me more. Since we do not have any conveyor belts yet all components had to be delivered by trucks. And speaking of trucks, for our expansion we will need a lot of them plus we will need excavators. So the next step, what I did was to build the vehicle depot where I ordered two excavators plus some additional trucks which will be needed for future mining operations. I started with mining of coal because this resource I need right here right now, first for smelting of iron and for production of bricks which are needed for construction materials. To produce bricks, in addition to coal, I needed also water and dirt. To obtain water I decided to build two rain water collectors. They will produce just enough water to supply this brick production. And dirt was produced uh, simply from mining coal and in the future it will be produced from mining of other resources. It's not that I would need dirt in the future because I plan to switch from bricks to concrete slabs as soon as possible. Uh, but still it's nice to know where we can more where we can get more dirt in case we need it, for example to produce arable land. So at this point it was time to actually think about maintenance, so I built simple setup to produce maintenance so our uh, trucks and excavators continue uh, their work and with that being done I realized that I'm running low on workers so I 
decided that it's time to expand the settlement. I have built a beacon to attract new people and started uh, building of a new housing. For the successful continuation, I needed not only more workers, but also more vehicles. So I have built like very basic temporary uh, production of vehicle parts. And then also I just designated the uh, new ramp to reach this uh, upper platform where I could get myself more uh, building area and uh, underground freshwater deposit. The next major threat to the colony was the shortage of diesel. Because without diesel, vehicles cannot work. And without vehicles, everything will stop, my citizens will die, and I will lose the game. So I started, uh, of course, first I cleared the forest here, and then I started building the basic um, oil distillery setup. So I just built three oil wells, connected them with tubes, and built basic oil refinery, which will accept coal and oil and produce uh, some waste water and diesel fuel. Up to this point, this production was the first one which produced some uh, unnecessary byproduct. In this case, it's waste water. So usually on other maps, uh, when you build this first oil setup, uh, it is very close to to the ocean. So you can just directly uh, connect your oil refinery with a liquid dump and dump this waste water into the ocean. On this map, this oil deposit is relatively far away from the ocean, so it's not really practical right now to build like a very long tube to the ocean. So I decided just to build a liquid storage here to collect wastewater and then use trucks to deliver this wastewater to the liquid dump, which will be built at the ocean. Having more or less reliable diesel production setup enabled me to build the first electricity generator setup, which at first consisted of four diesel generators. And at this point, the ball started rolling. I continued with building of more or less permanent iron smelting setup near the excavation site of iron ore and moved the, my production of construction materials closer to the permanent production of iron plates. The formation of the ramp to the upper surface was going along nicely, albeit very slow, because it was mostly formed from the waste produced by the settlement. So I needed to figure out a way how to do it faster. But before that, I decided to switch the production of bricks into the production of concrete slabs. I did the switch at this point because I did not produce enough dirt to produce me enough bricks, but I started producing enough slag and rocks which I could turn into concrete. To ensure that I have enough rock for concrete production, I have designated a new mining area dedicated specifically for the extraction of rock. Additionally, the rock produced here was also used to speed up the deposition of the ramp to the upper surface and the area which in the future would be cleared in this place would be used for construction. After I have figured out rock, I started planning the production of another important ingredient for concrete which is the cement. Cement requires limestone, so I've set up basic mining operations to extract limestone and build the first kiln which would produce me some cement. At this point I also started to experience the shortage of built-in area near the shore, so it was time to actually expand the shore by dumping the excess rock and slag produced by my mining operations. The next step was to set up the production of electronics. Electronics are very important for maintenance and for tier 2 building materials, and in principle it's very easy to produce it, so you just need rubber and copper. So I've set up basic rubber production, which needed only diesel and coal. Coal I already mined at this point, and diesel I already had like full storage of diesel. So I placed the rubber factory and then also a refueling station, just because I could and because it was uh, really necessary to save time for excavators so they don't have to come to the diesel storage to refuel themselves, they 
the fuel could be delivered just by trucks. After being done with the rubber production, I have set up the production of copper. So in principle, this setup is just a copy paste from the smelting of iron with the, <coughs> with the addition of electrolyzer. Water for electrolyzer I took uh, from two groundwater pumps, which I've built on the nearby groundwater deposit. The first big scale industry which should be built in this game is the production of construction materials. And construction materials require concrete. At this point I already had like a very basic uh, production of concrete slabs and I decided to build a proper construction, uh, sorry, production of concrete slabs. Uh, so I've built here two crushers. One would accept slag from uh, smelting of iron and the second would accept rock, which was produced uh, via different mining operations. Uh, slag would be crushed into crushed slag, which would directly go as an ingredient into concrete. And uh, rock will be crushed into gravel that would be split. One part would go to the next set of two crushers, which will crush gravel into manufactured sand. And the second part of gravel would go to the same conveyor where I have crushed slag in case I, do, I have not enough of crushed slag to supply the production of concrete slabs. So this is how this setup looked when it was almost finished. Um, I would also here add two more concrete mixers as soon as I would clear the additional space from trees and uh, later in the future I would also um, build a conveyor which will directly deliver cement from kilns to these concrete mixers. For now the cement will be delivered just by trucks. And the water I have taken from the same line which supplies copper electrolysis. After being done with the production of concrete I've spent some time to build conveyor lines here and there just to minimize the amount of trucks needed to uh, deliver m materials from one production to another. In principle it's really necessary to build as many conveyors as possible so that your trucks really have to uh, work or spend their time only on really necessary tasks which could not, could not be fulfilled by con conveyors or it's, if it's not practical to build conveyors in some occasions. Otherwise conveyors are necessary everywhere. While I was busy with the production of construction materials the building of the ramp was progressing nicely and I really needed this ramp as soon as possible because I needed the access to the upper area where I could build enough farms to sustain the growing population. Without the upper area it would be almost impossible to really expand and grow because here in this narrow valley I don't really have enough space for farms and thus I cannot really expand my factory because I do, will not have enough workers because more workers need more food and I don't have space for more farms which produce more food. So the building of this ramp is imperative. Another crucial component of self-sufficiency in this game is maintenance. Maintenance is required for all vehicles and all factories. Uh, so and lack of maintenance is one of the more common reasons of uh, failure or I'll say death on the early stage stages of the game because if you don't have enough maintenance materials then your trucks will stop working your factories will stop working and your people eventually will die from starvation and the game will be essentially over it will be very hard or almost impossible to recover from this. So I have set up basic maintenance production. Well, I would not call it basic, it's already actually proper maintenance production, which will carry me through early and mid game. Additionally, near the maintenance, I also established the production of vehicle parts because they require essentially the same materials, which would be very handy when I uh, build conveyors with necessary ingredients to this production area. And this uh, production of equal parts I will later expand uh, for 
tier 2 vehicles as well. As promised, I have also expanded the production of concrete by adding additional two mixers and also slightly changed the position of the water line so that it uh, doesn't interfere with the traffic of trucks, so it leaves more space for trucks to drive on the other side. Then I spent the next half an hour just observing how the ramp is built, how the new shoreline is being created by depositing excessive rock and slag, and here uh, I'm just building a conveyor line from the production of electronics uh, to the production of tier 2 construction materials and maintenance and vehicle parts. So I have not shown how I created the production of uh, tier 2 construction materials simply because it's in principle trivial. You just uh, take a conveyor from production of tier 1 construction materials and add some electronics. This is how my main industrial area looked at this stage of the game. So I had already production of maintenance, tier 1 and tier 2 construction materials and vehicle parts. So in principle, this was more or less already a self-sufficient base from where the only option was to expand further. And the next step was to establish the production of tier 2 science packs. So the recipe for tier 2 science packs was very simple. It was just some mechanical parts and uh, electronics, essentially the same ingredients which were used for production of maintenance and vehicle parts. So it was just a matter of building the necessary production chain. For the next half an hour there were no substantial changes to the factory. I just waited for the shoreline to be expanded further, for the ramp to be deposited. Uh, the only thing I did is designated the new excavation site for coal extraction because I have already used up all the coal which was on the surface so I needed to dig deeper. You can also see that I'm still using uh, simple farms even not irrigated farms because uh, there were simply no space uh, for irrigation so I couldn't really put uh, any rainwater collectors and I needed these um, groundwater deposits for my industry. So at this point I used just simple farms and this pretty much limited my uh, food production and limited how many citizens I could have at this point. And of course I didn't forget about research and this time I researched different technologies and one of them, I would say the most important one, was steel. So as soon as I've unlocked steel, I started building my first uh, steel production facility, which is in principle very simple. I just take the iron ore, sm uh, smelt it in the furnace, and then um, the oxygen furnace makes molten steel and then a special cold caster uh, machine created like steel plates from this molten steel. So the water for steel I have taken again from the same line which supplied concrete production and copper production and um, oxygen for oxygen furnace I have taken from the plant which I have built just nearby somewhere. So why I said steel was very important at this point? Well, because it was needed for tier 3 construction materials, which, would requ which will be required, for example, for advanced oil refinery, plus they will be required for ship weapons, and ship weapons will be necessary to unlock more of the uh, exploration map, and also steel uh, will unlock me a new, more efficient recipe to produce mechanical parts, which will save me some iron. At the same time, the ramp to the upper surface was already technically finished and I just needed to dig through the final, this little piece of a mountain to reach big areas where I can truly start expanding my industry, my production and everything else. So I think this was a good and smooth start on this challenging map and in the next videos I will show how I further expanded my settlement. So if you liked my content, please subscribe and write what you think in the comments down below. I would really appreciate any kind of constructive feedback. Thank you.